We can never praise him enough for his countless and continuous precious, precious blessings. We beg him to never deprive us of any of them and always increase us in all of them. And I testify that there is no worthy of worship nor true God except Allah, one and only. He has no partners and no equal and I testify that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. And I ask Allah Almighty to shower abundantly his peace, compassion, mercy and blessings upon our dear and beloved Prophet Muhammad, his family, companions, followers and upon all of us gathered here in his blessed house on this blessed day, this blessed month. Ameen Allahumma Ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, today is the 27th day of Dhul Qi'dah. In the Hijri lunar months or calendar, this month, the 27th day of this month called Dhul Qi'dah, this is the 11th month of the calendar year, similar to November in the solar calendar. And the very next one is called Dhul Hijjah, which is likely to start on Monday, insha'Allah ta'ala, according to calculations. Which makes Eid, according to calculations, likely to be on Wednesday, insha'Allah ta'ala. And that next month is called Dhul Hijjah. The word Hajj is there. And that is the 12th month of the Hijri calendar year. And then the first month, similar to January in the solar calendar, is called Al-Muharram or Muharram. And all three consecutive months are sacred months, extra special months. Allah Jalla wa'ala made them sacred. Allah Jalla wa'ala created the days and Allah Jalla wa'ala made Friday sacred. Allah Jalla wa'ala created the months. And Allah Jalla wa'ala made those, these three months and Rajab, the fourth, sacred. Allah Almighty says in the Qur'an, بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ إِنَّ عِدَّةَ الشُّهُورِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ اثْنَا عَشَرَ شَهْرًا فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Verily, the count of the months or the number of the months according to Allah in his book, in the book of Allah, are 12 months the day he created the heavens and the earth. 12. Those 12 months are the Hijri, lunar months. Minha arba'atun hurum. Four of them are sacred months. Four of the 12 are sacred months. We are today in one of them. And from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the next two months also consecutively are sacred. And in these sacred months, Allah jalla wa'ala says, فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا فِيهِنَّ أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't you dare wrong one another or yourselves in them. Don't you ever afflict any injustice, especially in them. The scholars of Tafsir and Quran say that wrongdoings and injustice is prohibited year round, but especially in these months. It is even more important that we are more cognizant of avoiding the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and especially wronging others. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, during these months, and especially during some days within these months, he used to do something special. So in general, he recommended fasting in these months. Any days you want to, you wish to fast. We know this from the story of Al-Bahili. There was a man from Bahil, and he approached the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and he said, do you remember me? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi looked at him, he looked like a, an, an ill man. He looked sick, thin, his eyes are kind of, you know, he didn't look well. Prophet ﷺ said, no, I don't remember. He said, I am the man, bah Bahili, the person from bah Bahil. Last year I met you. The Prophet ﷺ recalled the man from Bahil a year ago. He looked healthy, he looked well. He said, what happened to you? He said, I, I, since the day I met you, I fasted every single day. Every day. From Fajr to Maghrib, no food. 
He became thin. He didn't appear well. The Prophet ﷺ said, why did you do this to yourself? The Prophet ﷺ told him, fast Mondays and Thursdays. He said, no, no, I can do more. He said, fast the 13th and 14th and 15th of every Hijri month, that is. He said, I could do more. He kept saying, I could do more until the Prophet ﷺ said, Sum min al hurumi wa turuk, sum min al hurumi wa turuk, sum min al hurumi wa turuk. Fast of the sacred months and don't fast. Fast and don't fast. Fast meaning every other day. This is the Siyam of Dawood alayhi wa ala nabiyyina salatu wa salam. So we know from this hadith, the mentioning of al-hurum. Al-hurum are the four sacred months. So here we learn that it is recommended to fast during those months if we can and want to. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam from the inside of the blessed household of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our beloved mother Hafsa, son of our beloved leader and companion and best friend of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umar radiyallahu anhuma wa anis sahabati ajma'een she says that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam says لم يكن أربع لم يكن يدعهن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم Four things the Prophet ﷺ never used to not do. Four things the Prophet ﷺ used to never not do. In other words, he always did this. صيام عشرة والعشر أي من ذي الحجة وثلاثة أيام من كل شهر وركعتا الغداء وركعتان قبل الغداء. The Prophet ﷺ she says used to always do this or never used to not do these four things. One of them is the fasting of the 10th day of Al-Muharram, called Ashura. The second is fasting the first 10 days of Dhul-Hijjah. By the way, we refer to them as 10 days, and they are 10 days that are super blessed. And let me explain what day is defined as. Day is from Fajr to Maghrib. That's the definition of day. And night is from Maghrib to Fajr. That's the definition of night. And therefore, the most precious 10 nights of the year are the last 10 nights of Ramadan, right? And mashallah, most of us take days off work, come to the masjid, the masjid is packed, and it ought to be. May Allah accept, and may Allah bring many Ramadans to come, while we are in good health and He is pleased with us. The most precious 10 days of the year, meaning from Fajr time to Maghrib time, those hours are the most precious of the whole year, including the days of Ramadan, are the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. The first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Let me say this again. Dhul Hijjah is likely to start Monday. Inshallah. We are waiting for Saudi Arabia and the Hajj ministry to say, they are not to announce when the month of Dhul Hijjah is going to begin so we can align our Arafat fasting with the Arafat, the Hujjaj in Arafat. We don't want to be off schedule. Muslims need to be united. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, إِنَّ هَذِهِ أُمَّتُكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً وَأَنَا رَبُّكُمْ فَاعْبُدُونَ Surely, verily, this nation, this ummah of yours is one ummah. And I am your Lord, therefore worship me. Allah Jalla wa Ala says. The reference to the unity of Allah, the oneness of Allah and the unity of our ummah is ex of extreme importance. This ummah, for it to be united, it is not just by words. It's not by wishful unity. It's through structured ritual, rich, rituals that are structured to bring unity to our ummah. How so? Allah Jalla wa Ala made a sha'ira. Weekly gathering for Muslims. No matter what you're doing, no matter where you are, gather together every Friday. Brings us together. Semi-annual gathering of unity. Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr. It was so important it is so important, it should remain and must remain so important that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa and the Sahaba implementing his 
his teachings, which are the best generation of understanding and implementing this religion. Radiallahu anhum ajma'een would carry the elderly, the sick, the children, ladies that are exempt from prayer, all would gather to pray together Eid, and those who are not praying, they would just still be with the Muslims in a gathering of unity. There's a global gathering of unity. That is Hajj. لِيَشْهَدُوا مَنَافِعَ لَهُمْ وَيَذْكُرُوا اسْمَ اللَّهِ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْلُومَاتٍ عَلَى مَا رَزَقَهُمْ مِنْ بَهِيمَةِ الْأَنْعَامِ So they can witness benefits for them. People do business, mashallah. The, the, the economy is booming with four million hujjaj plus. But not only that, the unity of Muslims together, they are from every walk of life, every ethnicity, every language, every income bracket. And they all come together, not to go on a beautiful beach, not to have a cruise. They are going in an uncultivated valley, in the middle of the desert, under the hot sun, to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and show absolute obedience to their master and lord subhanahu jalla wa ala. Sami'na wa ata'na. Absolute submission to Allah. Hence Muslims. This obedience to Allah's command and coming together in form of unity to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not come together united to do with sin and against the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. In the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends in a way yaliqu bi jalali wajhihi wa azim sultanih on the day of Arafah, the ninth day of Dhul-Hijjah. And Allah Almighty praise, praises them to his malaika and he says, look at my servants. Atawni shu'than ghubra. They came to me, their hair is uncombed, they're covered in dust from the travel and, and difficulty. They only seek my pleasure. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all of them. Not only does he forgive, Allah jalla wa ala pardons from the punishment of the hellfire more people from them on that day than any other day of the year. They will never go to Jahannam. May Allah make us amongst them. That gathering of unity in obedience to Allah Almighty defeats the sole purpose of the shaitan. This is why the shaitan is not seen more humiliated, more defeated on any other day more than that day. He wants divisiveness and his soldiers, human and shaitan and jinn, want divisiveness. Yes, there are human shaitans. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ We all memorize. Now it's time to think. مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَاهِ النَّاسِ مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ الَّذِي يُوَسْوِسُ فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنْسِ وَالْجِنِّ يُوحِي بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَى بَعْضٍ زُخْرُفَ الْقَوْلِ غُرُورًا وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ مَا فَعَلُوهُ فَذَرْهُمْ وَمَا يَفْتَرُونَ وَلِتَصْغَى إِلَيْهِ أَفْئِدَةُ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ وَلِيَرْضَوْهُ وَلِيَقْتَرِفُوا مَا هُمْ مُقْتَرِفُونَ قُلْ أَفَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ أَبْتَغِي حَكَمًا The shaytan wants divisiveness. Human shaytans work for the jinn shaytan. They want divisiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, إِنَّ هَذِهِ أُمَّتُكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً وَأَنَا رَبُّكُمْ فَعْبُدُونَ Surely this nation of yours is one nation, one ummah, and I am your Lord, therefore worship me. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, four things he never used to not do. One of them is fasting on the 10th day of Al-Muharram called Ashura. The other is the first 10 days of Dhul-Hijjah. When we say Dhul-Hijjah, 10 days, we only fast nine. But we refer to all 10 because all 10 the tenth day is Eid al-Adha. It is prohibited for Muslims to fast on the Eid, whether Eid al-Adha or Eid al-Fitr. But all ten days, including the day of Eid al-Adha, are extremely blessed days. And the days that are referred to fasting are only the first nine days. And any fast, let me highlight this very clearly, 
any fasting outside Ramadan is non-obligatory. Let me say this again. Only Ramadan is the obligatory fasting. All other fasting is non-obligatory fasting. If you do it, you will get rewarded tremendously. And if you don't do it, you will not be rewarded, but you also will not have sin for not doing it. But let me explain to you a little bit of the reward. Rasulullah said, من صام يوما في سبيل الله بعد الله بين وجهه وبين النار سبعين خريفة. One who fasts one day in the path of Allah or the way of Allah. One day, this is nafil fast. It's not Ramadan. Non-obligatory fast. Allah will put a distance of 70 years between their face and hellfire. One day. يوم القيامة when everybody is crying نفسي نفسي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have the fasting and the uh, Quran. They will both intercede on behalf of that servant who fasted and the servant who read the Quran. The Quran and the fasting will intercede on behalf of a servant of Allah on the Day of Judgment, the fasting will say, Oh my Lord, I have prevented him or her from eating, drinking, and fulfilling their desires during the day. Oh Allah, accept my intercession. And the Quran will say, I stopped, the, I stopped them, or the Qiyam, I stopped them from sleeping at night. Oh Allah, accept my intercession. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept intercessions from both. So when we say non-obligatory, this is from you must or must not do. Now, within the non-obligatory, there, is, there, is, there, are, there are levels. There is recommended and there is highly recommended. This happens to, be, to fall under the highly recommended. Those nine days, Rasulullah used to not, ever not fast them, meaning he always used to fast those days. Now, for our application purposes, if you can fast all nine days starting Monday all the way till Tuesday, do it. MashaAllah, that's amazing. And if you can fast two of those days, do it. Five of those days, do it. Eight of the nine, do it. One day, at least do the ninth day if you can't. If you can't fast any of the first eight, fast the day of Arafat. The Prophet ﷺ said, he, Allah forgives two years of sin. One forward and one backwards for fasting just that one day. These are special seasons. The Ummah of Rasulullah ﷺ has a short lifespan. 60 to 70 approximately and then so, very few people go above and, be, and, and some go before Allah Jalla wa wants this ummah to enter into Jannah before all the other ummah not because you're yani, just because no Allah gives special seasons to this ummah if they take advantage of it they will enter into Jannah listen carefully to the Quran لَيْسَ بِأَمَانِيِّكُمْ وَلَا أَمَانِي أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ It isn't up to your wishes or the wishes of the people of the book. مَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا يُجْزَ بِهِ Anyone who does wrong or evil or, wrong or sin, they will be accountable and held accountable and pay for it. وَلَا يَجِدْ لَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَلِيًّا وَلَا نَصِيرًا And that person will not find anyone other than Allah to help them. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِنَ الصَّالِحَاتِ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ And anyone who does good, good deeds, whether they are male or female, while they are believers. What is believers for the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله. You believe in this and you do good deeds. If you do that, فأولئك يدخلون الجنة. Such people will enter into Jannah, paradise. ولا يظلمون فتيلا. They will not have any injustice uh, that they would experience. Brothers and sisters, these. Nine days or ten days of Dhul-Hijjah are so important and so precious. We should be filling the masjid the way we fill Ramadan nights. We should do it during the day in these ten days. We should encourage each other. We should cultivate a culture of gravitating towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should try to put an effort. Don't just, it's not going to happen on its own. Go to your calendar. Put some notes. 
make sure you follow that, put an alarm, do something. Take some time off if you have extra time off that you choose to, to read extra Qur'an or give extra sadaqat or do extra good deeds. Rasulullah he built his masjid before he built his own house. But his masjid wasn't just for prayers. And the Sahaba certainly didn't only come for Jumu'ah as many of us do. They came here regularly to his masjid and he taught in his masjid. Today Rasulullah is not physically with us, but his teachings certainly are. Every Wednesday after Maghrib, 9 p.m., we sit here and we teach one hadith we study together. <coughs> it's as if Rasulullah is saying it to us. It's his words, his teachings. Yet we are distracted elsewhere. We will be accountable for that. The adult education team, may Allah bless them, they are bringing refreshments for you to, to motivate you. They have chocolates for your children so they're motivated. There's so much effort just so we can come together for 20, 30 minutes so we can learn something about our deen and bring this nur to our lives. Be honorable guests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَحَقٌ عَلَى الْمَزُورِ أَنْ يُكْرِمَ, أن يكرم زَائِرَهُ جَلَّ جَلَالُهُ there's a right upon the host to be extremely hospitable and generous to his guests. How can we deprive ourselves from being guests of Allah? So not only come to Jumu'ah, come on Wednesday nights to learn the teachings of our deen. Once a month, we try to bring a guest scholar to come and, and, and share something in their specialty. Friday, a week from today, Saturday and Sunday, Friday 7 p.m., 7.30 I believe, Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., Sunday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We have no excuses. We're doing it in times that you shouldn't have other distractions. After work on Friday and Saturday and Sunday morning after you sleep in and you're comfortable, you come at 10 o'clock so you can come and learn something for three hours. Dr. Shuaib Malik is a professor. He's going to be coming to talk about an issue that many adults may not feel very much yani, uh, challenged by, but some of the younger ones are being conditioned and targeted to actually question their faith. So he is actually coming to talk about atheism and science and if, uh, and, and if the existence of God and how to prove it and all these other things that many of us adults don't, don't have that as a challenge. But the younger generation that you have entrusted in the public school system and colleges, they are being conditioned to question a lot of these things. And he specializes in countering these arguments. So you will be on Friday night, Saturday and Sunday mornings, God knows what you will be doing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold every one of us accountable as we heard in the ayat. You have children, you have youth, you have youngsters. It is important, extremely important that you take advantage of these programs. They came all the way to your doorstep. All the way to your doorstep. Allah will ask you, were you sleeping? Were you watching television? Were you having a party? When the two hours or three hours that your masjid has brought you someone in a specialized area that will help support your youth so they can learn how to counter those challenges. Please mark your calendars for that. And lastly but not least, this is a proven method. Every day in your home, take five no more than ten minutes. Five no more than ten minutes to read one hadith of Rasulullah as a family. Husband, wife and children. Sit down. Please don't go more than 10 minutes. Don't make it boring and overwhelming. Please make it short and sweet. Read from a book such as Riyadh al-Salihin or any hadith book you choose. One hadith in any language that you understand. Have a light discussion. Ask your children to give you a point that they've extracted or learned from this hadith and reward them for it. When I was a kid, my dad used to give us a dollar if we were able to bring out a point. That means we're paying attention. Motivate them, engage them, and you can also do, if you want to do every other day or do one month this way or one week that way, one story of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum from a book such as Hayatul Sahaba radiallahu anhum or any other Sahaba story book. Imagine if you do five to ten minutes a day, 365 days a year, that's 365 ahadith that you and your family learned more in one year. And if you did the story of the Sahaba, that's 365 stories of Sahaba عنهم, that you've gained knowledge about in one year. You brought the nur of this deen in your home. In addition to coming to the masjid, mashallah, then we're moving in the right direction. So please take some of this advice to heart. It worked and it will continue to work.
and it's light and sweet. This is important. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and keep us guided. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give shifa to all of our brothers and sisters who are sick. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them complete and speedy recovery. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give Brother Muhammad Sabr Amin full shifa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give Dr. Sidri full shifa. May Allah have mercy on the souls of those who've passed away in faith before us. Allahumma ya farij al hammi wa ya kashif al gham. رحمن الدنيا والآخرة ورحمهما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك عظيم سلطانك اللهم فرج هم المهمومين ونفس كرب المكروبين وأصلح أحوالنا وأحوال المسلمين وردنا اللهم إلى دينك ردا جميلا اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان واجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونسألك اللهم الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا ولا إلى غيرك طرفة عين ولا أقل من ذلك وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters, tonight from 7 to 9, we are going to have a workshop on Hajj. For those who are going to Hajj or wish to just refresh their knowledge about Hajj, inshallah ta'ala, may Allah accept from all the hujjaj, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring them back safely. And please, before you leave, in this sacred month, support your masjid, give generous contributions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon you his infinite generosity and replenish your wealth and multiply your rewards. Ameen, Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa aqim salah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين 